Hey there, this is CSD Math 8, Unit 5, Lesson 7, Connecting Representations of Functions. So, look at the first one here. It says, this table shows the area of a square for specific side lengths. So when the side length is 1, the area is 1. When it's 2, it's 4. When it's 3, it's 9. And of course, that's because the area is square. You take the side length and you square it, right? We take the 2 and we do 2 times 2 in order to get 4. And that's how we get that side length there, uh, the area there from the side length. It's a square. Makes sense, right? So this is our square. The sides are all the same. The area is going to be 2 times 2. And we have 4 happening there on the inside. The area of a circle with the radius r is given by the equation area equals pi times r squared. So we would take an area of a circle and we find out what its radius is going to be and we square that value and then multiply it also by 3.14. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Okay, so it's radius squared and then times 3.14. Questions there says, is the area of a square with a side length two inches greater than or less than the area of a circle with a radius of 1.2 inches? Okay, so basically we're comparing a square with a side length of two, comparing that to a circle with a radius of 1.2, okay? And we want to decide if this is greater than or less than what's going to happen there. Okay? So you want to think about there and then support your answer with some work to show why do you think this is going to be the case, whether it's greater than or less than. So that's what you're trying to figure out right now. I'm going to leave it like that for you so you can use the equations that are provided here as well as what we talked about right there to see what this is going to be. This one we already know is going to be, we said, 4 because we can see it's two by two, which is four. The question is what's that area, and then which one's greater than less than. All right, number two. I'm gonna talk to number two as, again for you as well, because just A, B, C, D, so let's see what you have here. It says match each story to a graph and write a story for the remaining graph. Okay, so we have three stories that match three of these, and there's one that doesn't have a story. So we have, in this case here, just looking at the graphs, we have something that has basically a gradual increase, right? There's a distance and there's a time and the distance is increasing gradually over time. On this one here, we can see you're kind of going, whatever you do there, there's some kind of pause in the distance and then it goes some more. So this one, in terms of time, it goes for a while, there's no movement and then it goes again. This one is a slow increase, right? So the distance is really slow at first and then it kind of gets going towards the end. So it takes a while to start making a distance there. And on this one, we can see that in terms of this distance, <laughs> it's gonna go somewhere and then pause and then goes backwards and then take some time off and then it goes again. So we're going, we're going the wrong way, we're stopping and then, <laughs> right? So we go forward, backwards, stop, and then we go again. It's a little bit chaotic there. So let's look at our, our stories. Which ones match here? I had just left home when I realized I had forgotten my book, so I went back to pick them up. So in terms of distance here, it's someone who's going to go, and then they're going to come back because they forgot the books. So can you see which one of these is going somewhere and pick, coming back up? Hope you can. <laughs> then we have... B, things went fine until I had a flat tire. So things were going, and then things just didn't quite work out. There's a little bit of a, oh, I wrote up here, gradual increase. This is a gradual decrease. I'm so sorry. I misread my own notes here, decrease here. So I say that, oh, gave you what B is, right? B's going to go there. So we see we're going fine, and then things start to slow down, right? We're not going quite as far. So this was a going fine and then flat tire, my distance got less. So that's why that goes with that one there. I started out calmly, but sped up when I realized I was going to be late. So they started it off like just smooth and easy. And then we see we sped up. So that one sped up. So we see an increase happening there. All right. And I'll let you write a story for what you think is going to be there. Okay. So that's it. Alrighty, looking at number, well, I 
we'll go ahead and say here, this one's going to go with this guy, just so you have an idea. And let's look at three. Okay, we're going to go ahead and distribute this one. First of all, we have the 3x minus 9. All right. And then over here, we're going to multiply a half times 2. Well, 1 half times 2 is equal to 1. So we're left with just x. And then a half times negative 6 is a half times 6. And that reduces to 3, but we keep the negative sign, so negative 3. Now we're going to go ahead and subtract x from this side and x from this side. So this goes away. 3 minus 1 is 2x. Then we're going to add 9 and add 9. And that's equal to negative 3 plus a positive 9 is equal to positive 6. Divide both sides by 2. And x is equal to 3. All right, and that's it for there. I'll let you do this one here. Remember on this one here, combine some like terms. On this side over here, make sure you distribute that first, and then you can solve and see what you come up with. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.